name is Nick Russo, and Rolling Stones called him the Buck Owens meets George Strait. And you know some of his songs, Head Over Boots, Dirt On My Boots. And now he's backstage at Tin Man Jam. John Party, welcome to Tin Man Jam. Hey, hey, hey. So how does that make you feel, Buck Owens crossed with uh, George Strait? I love it. It's a great compliment. Uh, I love the Rolling Stones. They've been, they've been a big, big output for me and just fans and great people over there. So that's really that's awesome. I didn't even know they said that, so thank you. Well, one of the things that uh, I loved about Head Over Boots was dancing to the song. It's one of my favorite songs in the dance club. That's awesome, man. Now, um, the, I'm noticing a trend, though, because now you got dirt on my boots, mm -hmm. and it seems like it's an ode to the blue-collar worker. That's the way I take it. And, yeah. and he wants to take his girl dancing, forget about it. got a little dirt on the boots, but they're going to come off on the dance floor. Would you agree that was kind of the direction you were going with the song? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I loved how it talked about, you know, getting off the tractor, getting in the shower, picking up his girl and having a good time because that was totally me back before I moved to Nashville. And so I really connected to that song. I had a deep connection to that really redneck song. <laughs> <laughs> what does, I, I, I mean, I, I understand where it would be a redneck type of, type of vibe, but for the most part, I feel like a lot of people relate to that, especially um, when you get outside of the city and you get to those suburban areas where people are working. Oh, tractors, yeah. They are working out in the oil field or where it may be. For sure. I mean, it, and it's not, I, I, I drove bulldozers and, and heavy equipment before I moved to Nashville, so that's that's my connection. But anybody can connect to getting off work, you know, oh, and sure. um, just having ha wanting to cut loose and have, have, have a good time and, and especially flirt with hot Texas girls. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you grew up outside of Sacramento, mm -hmm. and I got to ask, how did you get into country music? Because when I think of Bay Area or California or Sacramento, I don't think about a country twang and cowboy boots. Well, you know I was straight out of Compton. No, I'm just <laughs> All right. But <laughs> straight face, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, my grandmother got me in the country. And where I'm from, it's, you know, it's really agriculture and, you know, tech. I mean, ag and country music really do go hand in hand a lot of the times. And... So I, country was always around me, and my grandma loved singing country music, and she we had a karaoke machine and this stuff like that. I started singing on it's probably about six, and writing songs at twelve, and she was always around for the early stages, just having fun. She wasn't like she never performed; she just really just liked to sing. So I mean, everywhere she goes, she sang. So I just kind of caught on that. She was really fun. Uh, do you remember any of those songs from your childhood that were maybe the first connections to country music? Oh, dude, I was singing like Hank Williams, uh, Hank Williams Jr. Is this ain't Dallas, this ain't Dallas, like, you know, and then, you know, Family Tradition, George Strait, a lot of George Strait, a lot of Randy Travis, mm -hmm. and so I caught on, you know, that's my, that was my country, and that's kind of why I, I leaned t more towards traditional because that's what I always thought country music is to me. Well, you know, I, I had a similar memory growing up. I remember riding with my mom. When my mom would only listen to Reba McIntyre. Uh -huh. And I knew every single word to every single Reba McIntyre yeah, song. She and I would be, oh, man. I'd, Here's a one-tenth fan and don't let me down. That's right. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> and, uh, and whoever's in New England and yeah, man, oh, yeah. all the album cuts, everything. We, we Reba's sing. a big star. No doubt, no doubt. And um, now I – Kind of switching gears from music because I read that you liked egg rolls at a gas station, or you like gas station food. <sighs> Can you tell me about this? This morning I saw some egg rolls on the little spinner thing, and I turned them down. I've been watching my weight and you know getting in shape, and I was like, I can't do it. I can't get the egg rolls to pass. Now no, they're just they're just good. Well, huh? there is this uh, gas station place here in Texas you might find, and they're called Laredo Taco Company, uh -huh. and they're in little gas stations, and it's. Hit or miss, you'll see them, and that's some of the best gas station food you could probably well, we ever have. We went to Bucky's today. Oh man, then you're you're you're, pra you're practically a. Texan I was already. Now. I had I had lunch at Bucky's. <laughs> yeah, man, Bucky's is. It's amazing how Texas people go crazy over this. It's a gas station with really clean bathrooms and food and oh, a beaver. It's the Walmart of ga uh, truck stops. That's and what I call and it. the the amount of people in the parking lot just. Oh, you, you yeah. never believe there's that many people traveling. They have like 50 urinals in yeah. there. Like, you go in there, like, there's 50 toilets in this thing. And they're all <laughs> spotless. And there's, like, three workers in there just cleaning it up. I was like, this is awesome. Now, uh, what are your thoughts on tacos? Do you have a favorite taco? Oh, um, I like fajitas. I had a lot of good fajitas while I've been in Texas. I was in Dallas yesterday, so I went to a place out there, had some fajitas. And, uh, so fajitas are great tacos. And I love in the morning, like, the bean and cheese tacos. Mm -hmm. My dad lives outside of San Antonio. In Spring Branch, Texas. Yeah, no, exactly. So I go, I go to Texas a lot, and um, 
I get a lot of tacos. Bean, bacon, and cheese. If you want to oh, add a little yeah. kick to it, mm-hmm. and then um, bacon, egg, and uh, cheese. Carne asada. Mm-hmm. If you ever get a chance to get that, it's like the meat and the gravy. Yeah, oh yeah, it's awesome, man. A lot so, of good, a lot of good uh, tacos in Texas. Yeah, can't go wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, um, be sure to get John Party's album, California Sunrise, wherever you buy your music. Um, we want to thank you for coming backstage and talking with us. Yeah. Uh, any thoughts on the show? What's your expectation tonight? I think it's going to be a very fun and intimate setting tonight, and you're going to see some. I mean, I played here before, but I don't, you know. You were here just a few months back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, for for the country fans, you get, like, Brad Paisley and Van Perry and, and Rascal Flatts, like, really broken down at the House of Blues, which is totally not, you know, you're usually going to see them in bigger places. So it's going to be really fun for the fans. I think it's a – they're going to have a lot of fun. And, of course, I'm going to kill it. I'm going <laughs> to slay it up there. Woo! Well, Mic drop. I'll tell you this. Last <laughs> time you were here, I had at least three or four friends send me Snapchat videos, you rocking on stage, and the whole place singing along with you. So I know everyone's ready to sing with you tonight, too. I, I'm, I, love, I love all the country fans out here, and uh, we, we, we sold it out last time we played here. So it's, uh, it's going to be a good night tonight. All right. Can't wait to see you on stage. Right. Thanks for coming through. Thank you.